Hello students, yesterday we were discussing about the uh, yesterday we were discussing about the the basic geometry shapes, postulates and some examples on the geometrical shapes, geometrical postulates. Today also we can solve some more examples. Today also we can solve some more examples on the basic geometrical shapes and the postulates. Okay. Now, in question four, point C is called the midpoint of the line segment. Prove that every line segment has one and only one point. Two points are given. Question here. Point C is midpoint of midpoint between A e and B is midpoint between A and B point C is midpoint between A and B prove that every line segment has one and only one midpoint prove that Every line segment has one and only one, one and only one midpoint. Here, instead of prove that when a point is given C, when a point C is given, in that case. AC is half of AB like that we have discussed yesterday. Okay, AB equal to half of AC equal to half of AB we discussed yesterday. Here, two points are given A and B. AB is a, a line segment. Point C is midpoint here given. Point C is midpoint of line segment AB. Then C is the only one point we should prove it. Okay? C is the only one point. One and only one point is in like it. We should prove that point. What is here? Now consider two points. P and Q. Okay? Consider two different points. P and Q. What is here? Two points you can consider here. A, B, A, B, consider P, consider Q. Let us consider that P is midpoint of this line and Q is midpoint of AB also. If you consider both points also, then it should be same. It should be same. Now what is here? P and Q are the two different points. What is AP? If P is midpoint, Let P and Q are two points on AB, two midpoints on AB, two points on AB such that to consider if you consider midpoint, okay? If you consider midpoint, what will happen there? Two midpoints. You can consider two midpoints. Then, what is here? AP equal to half of AB, CQ equal to AB, CD. CQ equal to half of A. Consider another line CD here. But if you consider another line CD, that is also. Now what is here? First let us consider two lines. Let us consider here two lines AB and CD. AB equal to CD. Okay. Consider 
टू लाइन ए बी इक्वल टू सी डी बोथ लाइन आर इक्वल ए बी इक्वल टू सी डी बोथ लाइन आर इक्वल इन दिस केस वॉट इज ए पी इफ पी इज मिड पॉइंट पी एंड के वार टू मिड पॉइंट ऑफ ए बी एंड सी डी टू लाइन आर दे ना वॉट इज AP equal to PB will become. If P is midpoint, means AP will become PB. If Q is midpoint, then CQ equal to what is here? Second line. CQ equal to QD. From first this point, AP equal to half of AB. Okay? And second one. What is here? CQ equal to that is also half of CD. Half of CD. CD we are getting here. Now consider these two points: half of AB and half of CD. Half of AB equal to half of CD because AB equal to CD. If you are taking this one as one. Half of AB, half of CD. Half of AB, half of CD. If you take this one as AB here, point C. Consider that point. Half of AB equal to half of CD equal to AC. You can consider here. Now what is this? If you consider this, because of from one, let us study this one. Now. First, what is here? C is midpoint of between midpoint of line segment A and B. Midpoint between A and B. Prove that every line segment has one and only one midpoint. Now in this case, AB is a line segment. AB is a line segment. C is a midpoint. We will prove that. Consider. Let us consider beginning. AB and CD are two lines, so they are both are equal lines. Okay. If both are equal lines, AB midpoint is P, CD midpoint is Q. Now what is here? P and Q are two midpoints. If P is midpoint of AB, AB equal to PB. Both parts will be same. If Q is midpoint, CQ equal to D, QD. CQ equal to QD. Now what is here? AB is half of AB. Okay? CQ is half of CQ is half of CD. Now, if both AB and CD are equal, their halves are also equal. Understood? If AB and CD are equal, their half parts are also equal. That is why, from one, AB and CD both are not different. Both if two lines are equal, then their midpoints are also same. If two lines are equal, then their half parts are also same. Then their two points are also same. That is why. A line segment has one and only one midpoint. Therefore, line segment has one and one and only one midpoint. Okay, a line segment has one and only one midpoint. If you take different points, you are taking still if the lines are equal, points will become equal. Line segments will become equal. That is why a line segment has only one midpoint. Midpoint means at the center of the line. Only one point is possible. That is why a line segment has only one midpoint. We cannot take two two midpoints. If you take two points also, they will become equal like this. Okay.
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन है सर इस वन में इन द फिगर गिवन AC if AC equal to BD then prove that AB equal to CD given line is given here A B C D B C and given here what is the condition if ac equal to bd if ac equal to bd then ab equal to cd ab equal to ab equal to cd we should prove this one understand the parts first what we have given ac we have given and bd we have given here and they are asking about ab and cd ab and cd they are asking now then we should prove that line segment ab equal to cd we should prove it now we should use the properties of line segments what is here this consider this ab and cd what is ab here ac equal to bd they have given what is ac ab plus bc okay what is ac here given ac equal to bd ac is what is here ab plus bc okay ab plus bc what is bd bc plus cd bc plus cd we have got here what do we get here bc 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 get cancelled. We can cancel BC BC na, no? or if we shift the line side, this will become minus. BC BC we can cancel here. What is remaining? AB equal to CD. AB equal to CD is remaining. Okay? AB equal to CD is remaining. We can shift to BC this side also, no problem. AB plus BC. This BC if we shift that side minus BC equal to CD. Plus BC minus BC will get cancelled. What is remaining? AB equal to CD. Okay? We are coming to this place. Now what is here? Given. AD is the line segment given here. AD is the line segment given. Now what is given? AC equal to BD. AC equal to BD they have given. Using the same condition, I am writing one equation here. AC equal to BD. AC means AB plus BC. AB plus BC. BD means what? BC plus CD. BC plus CD. I am writing from the given line segment. Okay, now BC you shift that, we shift that side, LHS. Plus BC will become minus BC. Plus BC minus BC will get cancelled. BC minus BC is zero. That is why remaining what is remaining here? LHS AB is remaining, RHS CD is remaining. That is the required relation. Okay, just we are using the properties of line segment. What is the property? When a point is given, sum of line segments, sum of line segments, and the subtraction of line segments, we are calculating here. This AC is sum of line segments AB plus BC. Okay? Here, BD is a line segment BC plus CD. BC, BC will get cancelled, remaining will be AB and CD. Next question is 
Why is axiom 5 in the list of Euclid's axiom considered universal truth? Why the axiom 5? Why the axiom 5? Axiom 5 is right. Exam five that whole is greater than the part. Whole is whole is greater than the part. Okay. What is here axiom? Whole is greater than part. That is axiom. Whole is greater than the part. That is the axiom 5. Now, what is they asking? Why is axiom 5 in the list of Euclid axioms considered a universal truth? Why axiom 5 is considered Considered as a universal truth. Universal truth. We should write the reason for this line. Why XM5 is considered as a universal truth? That is the question. Now, what is here? It holds true on any condition. This axiom holds true for any condition you apply. Any condition practically you apply, this condition is true. Now, for example, what this board you consider here? In this board, if I take this half part, if I take this part, this part is smaller than this whole board. Or this whole board is greater than this part. That is true for all the conditions. For example, take a line segment here. Line segment AB you take here. Line segment AB. AC is a part of AB. AC is smaller than AB. AC is smaller than AB. It means for any example you take, the part is smaller than the whole or whole is greater than the part that is axiom 5 case 1 case 1 AB is a line segment AB is a line segment and C is a point point on AB now what is here? AC is a part of AB. AC is smaller than AC is smaller than AB. Okay? AC is smaller than AB. Case 2. What is case 2 here? One rectangle you take here. AB, CD. AB, CD is a rectangle. In this one, I will divide this one here part. Diagonal divides a rectangle into two parts. Okay? This triangle is a part, part of this rectangle. Okay? This rectangle is a part of that. Now, what is here? Triangle ABC. Triangle ABC is a part of rectangle ABCD. Okay? Rectangle ABC is greater than triangle ABC. Rectangle Rectangle ABC 
ABCD equal to triangle ABC plus triangle ABC. Therefore, rectangle ABCD is greater than triangle ABC. Any example you can take here. If you take any example, whole is greater than the part. First, you are taking a line segment here. In this line segment, AC is a small part. Okay? AC is a part of this line AB. In this case, AC is smaller than AB. Or AB is greater than this AC. In that case, you can write here. AC, AB equal to AC plus AC plus BC. It means AB, AC is smaller than AB here. Second case, what is here? It is a rectangle. ABC is a rectangle. Diagonal is dividing the rectangle into two parts. The rectangle ABC is sum of these two triangles. Rectangle ABC is sum of the two triangles. It means rectangle is greater than the half a triangle. Okay? Rectangle is greater than its half a triangle. That is why take any example. Consider any example. Whole is greater than the part. Whole is greater than the part. That is the axiom 5. Any example, it is true for everything. Either geometrical or algebraic or any conditions, any practical examples. For example, I told you this board only. Board is a practical example. If I consider a very small part here, the small part is smaller than the whole part. Okay? Any life examples you can consider, this exam is true. Okay? Next, we can answer one more question. The next question is Okay Equal and ourselves of proof to person is We can study some equivalent to ourselves of Euclid's question is Equivalent versions of Euclid's fifth postulate. Equivalent versions of Euclid's. Equivalent versions of Euclid's fifth postulate. What is Euclid's fifth postulate? For every line L, for every line L, what is here? For every line L, for every point P on line L, for every line L for every point for every point P line on L line on the line L for every line L and for for every point P not line and L and for every point P not line and L. 
not lying on not lying on L. What is here? There exists a unique line M pass through P and L. There exists a unique line passing through M. There exists a unique line M. There exists a unique line M passing through passing through P and parallel to L. Passing through P and parallel to L. First, we will let us understand this one. A line L is there. Okay? A line L is there. Point P, not line is point P is outside here. Okay? Point P is outside. Okay, what is next point? There exists a there exists a unique line M passing through P. One line M pass through the P. Many lines you can consider here. Okay? Many lines will pass through here. There exists a point line which pass through P and parallel to L. Only one line is parallel here. This line is here, no? That line is M parallel to this line L. That is the case here. There exists only one line. One line L is parallel to L and it passes from the point P. This point P should not lie this L. It is outside this line. So that we can draw only one parallel line for this passing through this point P. Other points you can draw many lines. But from this point passing through this line, only one line is possible passing through this point and parallel to L. That is the condition. Two distinct intersecting lines cannot be parallel to the same line. One more also you can tell. This line M, L, M, N, O, N, P. N, P are intersecting lines. N and P are intersecting lines. If we shift here, they are intersecting lines. They are not parallel to L. They are not parallel to L. We can also call this one as, what is here? Intersecting lines are not parallel. Intersecting lines are not parallel. Are not parallel to a given line. To given line. What is here? Any one line can be parallel, but both lines cannot be parallel to the given line. Two lines are intersecting here. They cannot be parallel to the given line here. Okay? Here, P and M are intersecting. But M is only parallel here. Other line cannot be parallel. Like this, taking one parallel line and a point, we can create many versions like this. Okay, parallel lines means what? Two parallel lines, the distance between them is the same. Any point, the distance between them is the same. Okay? Now in this case, when a line is passing through P and it is parallel to given line L, only one line such line is possible. That is the first version. Second version is what? Intersecting lines cannot be parallel to, both cannot be parallel to the given line. What is here? Consider these two lines. What is considered here? L is the given line. Okay? L is the given line. M and P. M, N, O, P. N and it. Q you can take here. Q you can take here. M and Q. M and Q are the two intersecting lines. Only M is parallel to L. Q cannot be parallel to the point line L. That is why intersecting lines cannot be both parallel to the given line. Or not parallel to the given line. Any one line is possible. But both lines cannot be possible. 
Based on these versions, we can solve some examples. How do we rewrite it if it's the postulate so that it would be easier to understand? First, how do we rewrite if it's the fifth postulate so that it is it would be easier to understand? This is a given fifth postulate. How do you write it in an easy way? How can I write this one here? For every line L, for every line L, and for every point P, not lying on this one, on L, there exists a unique line M passing through the point P and then parallel to M. We should write this line in an easier way. Easy. Easier way and understanding way. Easier method and understanding method we can write this sentence. Easier way to understand. How can I write this one? For every line, if all lines are passing through point P, only one line is possible parallel to here. What is here? If all lines are If all lines are passing through a point P, if all lines are passing through the through the point P, only one line is parallel to this given line. Only one line is only one line is parallel to line here. Parallel to one line is parallel to given line. Given line here. In that way also we can tell this. Okay? Many lines we can draw through the P, but only one line is parallel to the given line here. Many lines. If all the lines passing through P, only one line is parallel to the given line here. In an easy way, we can tell that. Okay? That is the first question. Second question, what is here? Does Euclid's fifth postulate imply an existence of parallel lines? Explain. Next one. Does Euclid of the fifth postulate imply on the existence of parallel lines? Existence of parallel lines. Yes. Does Euclid Fifth postulate does Euclid's fifth postulate does Euclid's fifth postulate imply on the existence of parallel lines? Imply on the existence of parallel lines. Yes, definitely. What is here? Uh, 
when two lines are there, two lines are there, one line is intersecting here, angle one, angle two is there, okay, angle one, angle two. In the previous class, we discussed about the Euclid, Euclid is the fifth postulate. What is that? Sum of these two angles is smaller than 180. Sum of these two, wherever these lines are meeting towards here, the sum of these two angles is smaller than 180. Sum of these two angles is more than 180. We discussed that one. What is the third point? If both the sides they are equal, sum of these two and sum of these two are equal. Then they will become 180. Equal to 180. Okay. These are non-parallel lines. L, M, and N. Okay. L line N is passing through the two lines L and M. Any two lines L and M. Okay. Line N is line N is N is passing through L and M. Any two lines L and M. In that case, what is here? Angle 1 plus angle 2. Angle 1 plus angle 2 is less than 180. Okay? Angle 3 plus angle 4. Angle 3 plus angle 4. Angle 3 plus angle 4 greater than 180. If both are equal, if both are equal means both are equal to 180. Okay? If both are equal to 180, then sum of all the four angles is 360. If both are equal, if angle 1 plus angle 2 equal to angle 3 plus angle 4 equal to 180, if Angle 1 plus 2 equal to 3 plus 4, both are equal to 180. Then, line L and M, L and M are parallel lines. If both are greater and smaller, they are not parallel. If they are equal, equal to 180, they are parallel. That is why this fifth postulate is there, no? Fifth postulate tell us about the existence of parallel lines. Total three cases are there. Sum of first two angles is smaller than 180. Sum of other two angles are greater than 180. If they are equal, third case. If they are equal, the lines are parallel. Two lines are parallel. That is the third case. Yes. Yes, the fifth postulate Euclid's Euclid's fifth postulate Euclid's fifth postulate imply on existence of existence of parallel lines. Remaining, we can discuss in next class.